Ang math ay easy lang. Basta't alam mo kung paano sumunod sa mga rules and regulations nito. Ang topic ng video para sa araw na ito ay ang math at ang batas. Mathematical problems involving wages, high school level mathematics, application of labor advisory, Department of Labor and Employment, Philippines. Not all assigned problems in math is straightforward. When students were given a mathematical problem, there are times that not all information are available and readily solvable. So, meron mga assignments na ibinibigay sa mga high school or senior high school students na hindi ganun kabilis na masolve. So, merong mga pagkakataon na yung mga information na kailangan mo para kumpleto mong masolve ang isang mathematical problem ay hindi mo makikita dun sa problem na ibinigay sa iyo at kailangan mo pang gumawa ng pagsasaliksi. So, math teachers present this kind of challenge if they think the students need to be trained for research. Not just research, like information from encyclopedia, but information that will prepare them for life, like existing laws of the land. This knowledge would ensure them that they would go out in the playing field of reality. They are ready and understand their rights as well as their responsibilities as adult citizens of the country. So, pagka nagbibigay ng ganitong mga klase ng mathematical challenge yung mga guro, alam niya na kailangan na ng kanyang mga estudyante na magkaroon ng training para sa research. So, hindi ito yung bastang research lang na pangkaraniwang ginagawa ng estudyante na magbabasa ng mga libro at titingin sa mga encyclopedia para sa mga information at magagawa ng mga report. But mas malalim yung information na to at mas applicable sa tunay na buhay. So, ang example of which ay yung pagsasaliksik uh, ng kol dun sa batas ng ating bansa. So, yung mga knowledge or information na makukuha niya mula sa research na to ay makakapag-guide uh, sa kanila na kapag ka naroon na sila sa realidad na kailangan na magtrabaho at kung ano-ano pa, sila ay ready o handa na sila at nauunawaan nila ang kanilang mga karapatan at mga responsibilidad bilang mga manggagawa ng ating bansa. So, problem that requires research. I'm going to provide you an example of a problem or mathematical problem given by teachers and this at this particular level. So, Anneli worked three hours extra on May 1, which is her rest day. How much will she earn on this day if her daily rate is 900 pesos? So one would say, since she worked 8 hours a day, then she will be paid 900 pesos plus the extra 3 hours work rendered. But that would be wrong because she will be underpaid or not paid enough. So dito sa problem natin, merong sinabi si Anneli daw na isang empleyado ay nagtrabaho ng extra na tatlong ara, uh, oras in excess of her 8 hours work kasi sa loob ng isang araw, walong oras lang naman nagtatrabaho ang isang empleyado. Pero, pwede niyang dagdagan yun at ang tawag doon ay overtime. So, meron siyang overtime na 3 hours. Tapos, ang kanyang regular uh, rate ay 900 pesos sa bawat araw. So, sabi, na, sabi dito, minsan niisipin mo, so kung ganun yung kanyang ginawa, Babayaran siya ng 900 pesos at saka yung tatlong oras na extra na ginawa niya bilang overtime. Pero yun ay mali kasi kapag ka ganun lang yung uh, babayaran sa kanya, underpaid siya o hindi siya binayaran ng tama. 
Uh, the solution to this kind of math problem can be found from Labor Advisory 15 series of 2020 posted by the Department of Labor and Employment. Formula for the computation of wages are given and followed by employers to compensate the employees properly. So para daw dito, kasi yung dole kasi or Department of Labor and Employment, bago dumating yung uh, holiday, naglalabas na sila ng advisory. So, yun yung labor advisory. Tapos, nakalagay na dun yung mga computation kung papaano pasusweldohin ng isang employer ang kanyang employee kapag ka pumasok siya dun sa araw na yon. So, ang gagawin mo lang pag gusto mong mag-research, pumunta ka dun sa website ng, da ng DOLE, hanapin mo yung labor advisory na para doon sa date na kung saan uh, siya nagtrabaho yung May 1. Kasi every time na mayroong holiday, nagre-release la ng labor advisory ang dole para maging guided accordingly ang bawat employer. Kasi iba-iba yun ng klase ng holiday. So, meron tayong uh, regular holiday, meron tayong special holiday. So, iba-iba yung mga paraan ng pag-compute para sa compensation or wages ng mga empleyado. So let us analyze Annalie's problem. Annalie worked three hours extra on May 1, which is her rest day. How much will she earn on this day if her daily rate is 900 pesos? So ito yung analysis. She worked on her rest day. So kaya meron dito red. To emphasize na rest day niya yun, dapat hindi siya nagtatrabaho pero nagtrabaho siya. Which, coincidentally, is also a regular holiday in the Philippines. So, pula ulit yun. So, doble na. Meron na siyang rest day. Tapos, regular holiday dapat. Pero, nagtrabaho pa rin siya. So, May 1 is Labor Day. And that is uh, a regular holiday in our country. So, a regular employee will be paid 900 pesos on a holiday even if he or she doesn't come to work. Di ba? Kasi paid tayo dapat kapag ka regular holiday. However, an employee may require employ uh, an employer may require employees to come to work on a holiday. Example of which are BPO companies that ask employees to work because they are very much needed. Let's see how employees are compensated in this situation. Let's take a look what the law says. Annalise's case falls under Rules 4 and 5 of the Labor Advisory 15 series of 2020. So, ito yung example. Uh, Napunti na nga lang yung uh, para lang magkasya. Yung example ng Labor Advisory. Okay, so actually this is a, a copy PDF file ng um, DOLE. So, yan, nakasulat dito ha, Labor Advisory Number 15, to nakasulat dyan, Series of 2020, syempre, uh, permado yan nung naglabas ng Labor Advisory. So, ang title ng advisory nito ay Payment of Wages for the Regular Holiday on May 1, 2020. Ngayon, si, si Anna Lee, pag binasa mo to, dalawa dito yung uh, applicable para sa kanya, dalawang law. Uh, isa para dito sa papaano i-compute uh, kapag ka nagtrabaho sa regular holiday that falls on his or rest day. Yan. So, di ba dalawa yung red kanina? So, regular holiday na, tapos rest day pa. So, eto yung computation or formula for that. Now, aside from that, dahil nag-overtime siya, meron pa dito sa number 5, for work done in excess of 8 hours or overtime work during a regular holiday that also falls on her rest day. So, meron na namang guide kung papaano i-compute yun. So, let us solve. So, according to Rule 4, for work done during a regular holiday that also falls on his or her rest day, he or she shall be paid additional 30% of his or her basic wage of 200%. So, ito ha, tinan nyo, ang dami na. May 30% na, 
may 200% pa. So, itong computation. So, una, di ba, pag nagsasolve tayo sa math, binibigay mo na yung given. So, ito yung given natin. Sabi niya, may 900 pesos. Ito yung basic wage ni Anneli. So, dun sa dole formula, merong nakalagay na COLA or Cost of Living Allowance. Ngayon, yung binigay ni teacher na problem para isolve natin, hindi na niya sinama yung COLA. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun, walang COLA ha. Meron. Kaya lang for the simplicity, of the problem, at saka para mas madali siyang makompute, si teacher hindi na niya inilagay yung cola. Okay? So, again, to make everything clear, aside sa basic wage ng isang empleyado, meron pa siyang nare-receive na cost of living allowance. Hindi lang natin siya isasama dito kasi gusto ni teacher mas simplihan yung computation natin. Okay? So, this is the formula that is uh, involved in this computation. Basic wage plus COLA. Well, okay, this formula is stipulated in the uh, rule 4. Okay, so ayan yan. So, basic wage plus COLA times 200%. Ito yung double pay na sinasabi. Plus, may plus pa. 30% of basic wage times 200%. Itong second part na to kasi rest day. So, ito yung holiday pay plus ito yung additional compensation niya kasi rest day. So, paano yun i-compute? Yung wage niya, ha? Tandaan nyo yung uh, basic rule ng mathematics again. So, ito ay math tutorial. So, ang 200%, okay, may symbol ng percent, Pag tinanggal mo yung percent sign, tatanggalin mo din yung dalawang zero, ibig sabihin nun times 2, doble, ba? So, kaya yan naging ganun na lang kasimple, 900 times 2. Tapos yung 30%, since 30% pa rin yan, wala naman tayong binago, so yun pa rin. And then, kung mapapansin mo yung basic wage times 200%, eto na yan, 900 times 2. Again, yung 200%, na lang siya. Kasi inalis natin yung percent sign. Ngayon, multiply na natin 900 times 2 is 1,800. Doble na yung sweldo niya, ba? Plus, dahil rest day, yung 1,800, multiplyan mo siya ng 0.3. Bakit naging 0.3? Kasi ba yung percent sign, two decimal places, move mo siya. ba? So, yung decimal place niya dito, sa dulo ng zero, imove mo ng dalawa papunta sa left, isa, dalawa. So, pag inalis mo yung percent sign, move yung decimal point, isa, dalawa. Kaya naging point three siya. And point three times 1,800 is 540. Totaling 2,340 pesos para dun sa 8 hours work niya nung May 1. That's not all since you work an extra 3 hours overtime. So, hindi pa pala yun tapos kasi gumawa pa siya ng overtime, ba? So, let's continue solving. According to Rule 5, for work done in excess of 8 hours or overtime during a regular holiday that also falls on his her rest day, he or she shall be paid additional 30% of his her hourly rate on said day. So, take note, meron tayong co-computing pa na extra na hourly rate. So, ito yung formula, hourly rate of basic wage times 200% times 130% times 130% times the number of hours work. Take note, nakalagay yan sa batas. Yan yung formula. So, how do we solve it? So, Sabi natin, kailangan daw muna natin hanapin yung hourly rate ni Annalie. So, 900 divided by 8, diba kasi 8 hours lang yung work in a day. So, ang kanyang sweldo kada oras ay 112 pesos and 50 cents. Ipasok na natin yan dun sa formula ng OTP niya or overtime pay. So, again, the formula is hourly rate times 200%, times 130%, times 
times the number of hours work. Bakit ang dami-daming percent na to? Una, ito para sa holiday, ito para sa rest day, at ito yung extra kasi nag-overtime siya. O, di ba? Sarap magtrabaho. So, eto may yung computation. So, di ba yung, one, oh, sorry, yung 112 pesos and 50 cents, eto na yun. Tapos, yung, di ba yung sabi ko kanina, yung 200%, pag inalis mo yung percent sign, times 2 na siya. 130%, nag-move ng decimal point, 1.3. Tapos, ganun din sa isa pang 130%, 1.3. Tapos, yung number of hours na pinagtrabaho niya, that's 3 hours. So, multiply natin lahat yan. Sa OT pa lang, or sa overtime pay pa lang, meron na siyang 1,140 pesos and 75 centavos. Yun lang yung 3 hours na trinabaho niya on a rest day in a regular holiday. So, all in all, computing na natin lahat, yung total wage na na-receive ni Annalie noong May 1 ay yung sa 8 hours na 2,340 At saka yung OT niya na 1,140 and 75 cents, ang total na naiwi niya, 3,480 3, pesos and 75 cents as compared dun sa pangkaranimang sweldo niya na 900 pesos lang. Kaya tuwan-tuwa nga sila, di ba? Kasi nagtrabaho silang lahat ng rest day, tapos holiday pa, tapos nag-OT pa, di ba? Kita nyo, 3,480. 80 pesos and 75 cents compared dun sa 900 pesos. O, di ba? Kaya, pagka pinagtatrabaho ka ng rest day mo, sige lang. Kasi, well compensated ka naman eh. Di ba? So, sana maging guide ito ng mga estudyante kung paano mag-solve ng ganitong klaseng problem. Okay, basta-basta mag-solve lang ng multiply ka lang ng multiply ng hindi ka nagre-research. So, you have to uh, do some research to answer the problem correctly. So, yun lang naman yung uh, topic natin for today and thank you for watching. Huwag niyo pong kalimutan na mag-like, subscribe, and share ng video nito. At kung meron pa po kayong mga gustong itanong o mga topics na dapat na discuss ko, please comment down below. Shout out kay Joven ng BSBA sa pagbibigay niya sa akin ng information kung saan kukuha yung labor advisory sa website ng Logan. Another shout out para kay Dali Serna, uh, sa kung gusto dyan na vlogger, please uh, support her by subscribing in her YouTube channel. Thank you.